Alright guys, Dominic here for KitGuru and today we have a new graphics card on the table. Sadly it is not a new GPU architecture, however the card beside me does represent ASRock's first foray into the graphics card market. So this is the ASRock Phantom Gaming X RX 580. The first thing you need to know about this card is the fact that it's actually a relatively basic first effort. They've not pushed the boat out too far with their first graphics card. The first indicator of that is the fact that you only get two little accessories in the box. One is a driver disc and the other is a quick installation guide. So there's no anti-sag brackets or extra power cables or anything like that. The benefit for going towards a simpler design is that pricing can be more competitive. We've been told to expect this card at 329 euros, which at the time of filming is around 290 pounds, which would make it one of the cheaper RX 580s going. However, we will have to see as time goes by whether or not ASRock can confirm this pricing for the UK, as currently this card is not yet available to buy here in the UK. However, we will start with a look at the design of the Phantom Gaming X RX 580, and the first thing to note is the kind of gamery aesthetic. It's not as out there as some other cards we've seen previously. However, you can tell from the angled end of the card shroud as well as the silver accenting on the front that it is definitely more of a gaming graphics card. It's not as subdued as some others we've seen, but then again, as I mentioned, it's not that out there. And personally, I think it looks pretty good. It's relatively plain. And of course, the shroud is only plastic, so it doesn't feel that good in the hand. But from a purely visual perspective, I think it looks just fine. It's also a pretty standard size. It's just under 28 centimeters long. It's around 13 centimeters tall and about 4.2 centimeters thick. That makes it a dual slot card as well, so you should have no problems depending on the length of your case fitting this in an ITX enclosure. It's also worth pointing out the two fans are 85mm in diameter and they use double ball bearings. While on the sides of the card we can see there's some venting and some grooves. This is both for airflow as well as aesthetics. As for the power requirement, the Phantom Gaming X RX 580 only needs one 8-pin PCIe power connector, so that should make it compatible with most of the power supplies on the market, and we will get to power consumption later in the review. Turning to the back of the card, as we can see, there is clearly no backplate, and this is something I'm a bit disappointed about. We spoke to ASRock about this, and they said it is to help with heat dissipation. However, even if we ignore that for the moment, the thing I like about a backplate is not only does it look better, you're not just looking onto the bare PCB, it also prevents any unwanted spills or leaks. For instance, if you have a liquid cooler and maybe that leaks onto the back of your card, if you've got a backplate, you're more than likely going to be fine. And now we've taken the card apart, it's a simple process of just removing the four spring-loaded screws as well as another two Phillips head screws from the back of the card, and we can get a look at the PCB. The first thing I noticed is that the PCB itself is actually quite compact. The cooler unit actually overhangs the PCB by around 4.5 centimeters. Then my attention was drawn to the six power phases for the GPU, and there's also a single power phase for the memory. The cooler uses a copper contact block for the GPU core, and then we've got two six millimeter and one eight millimeter heat pipes, which obviously transfer the heat from the GPU core into the fin array, and then that heat is dispersed by the two 85 millimeter fans. It is also worth pointing out that we can see there are all of the necessary thermal pads for the memory chips, as well as the VRM MOSFETs. Now then, we will move on to performance of the Phantom Gaming X RX 580. The first thing to note is that using the supplied tweak tool, we did all of our testing with the OC mode enabled, and that simply raises the GPU clock from 1380 MHz to 1408 MHz, so it's a plus 28 MHz difference, but it's essentially a one-click overclock which anyone can do providing you download ASRock's tool. In this video, we're only going to be showing 1080p charts. However, you can of course find 1440p and 4K charts, as well as our full testing methodology over on kitguru.net. So make sure you check out the full review over on kitguru.net. So then, the overall performance, as you can see from these charts, it is basically what we would expect from any RX 580. You can see it is just one or two FPS slower than the Sapphire Nitro Plus limited edition model, which we also have on these graphs, but that is purely because the Sapphire card has a slightly faster clock speed of 1450 megahertz compared to 1408 of the ASRock card. 
In any case, the margins are small and the ASRock performs as we would expect from an RX 580 and we are of course using the latest drivers. Thermally speaking, it does run a bit warmer than we'd like with the GPU core peaking at 81C during 20 runs of the 3D Mark Firestrike Ultra stress test. However, we did not notice any thermal throttling, so the GPU core is obviously not causing the core frequency to slow down at all, so it is really nothing to worry about. It is quite noisy, however, with this card reaching almost 53 decibels, 52.9 to be exact, so it's definitely on the louder side. The benefit of this card is that the fans do turn off if it's under light loads, for instance, but if you're gaming, you're definitely going to want a headset as the fans do spin up, they do get quite loud, and as I mentioned, we saw a peak of nearly 53 decibels. Now then, moving on to power consumption, it is worth noting here that the figures we present are for the graphics card only. You can read more about this over on kitguru.net in the full review as we've uh, undergone some significant changes to how we actually measure the power of our graphics cards. But what you do need to know for the ASRock RX 580 is that it pulls pretty much what we'd expect from an RX 580. It pulls around 225 watts under load, which puts it just under a GTX 1080 Ti, and this particular ASRock model actually draws slightly less power than the Sapphire Nitro RX 580, which we have already mentioned in this review. So, so far we've established that performance is pretty much what we'd expect from an RX 580 clocked at this speed. It is slightly noisy and power consumption is again what we'd expect, but what can we get with overclocking? Well, I must say I was pretty disappointed with the overclock I managed to get from my RX 580 sample. As I mentioned, we did all of our testing with the OC mode already enabled, which had the clock speed running at 1408 MHz, and I was only able to add an extra 22 MHz to that. That was with the core voltage slider pushed to its maximum level, and we also had the temperature and power targets also set at their maximum levels. I was able to crank the memory as far as it would go to 2250 MHz, which is 9 gigabits a second effective, so that is as fast as the memory was going to go, however only 22 MHz added on to the GPU core. What performance gain does that bring? Well, as you can see here, not a lot. It's probably 1-2 to two FPS at most, and would I think this is worth it? Well, considering we actually had to run the fans at 100% to keep the GPU core from overheating, definitely not. That caused the fans to emit almost 65 decibels of noise and it was frankly a huge pain and we can also see that power consumption levels rose. Interestingly though, the temperature did actually drop by one degree compared to stock, but as I mentioned that was because we were having to run the fans at 100% to deal with the increased voltage and power requirements of the RX 580. So then, wrapping this video up, on the whole, the ASRock Phantom Gaming X RX 580 is undoubtedly a solid first effort from the Taiwanese company. It's not a hugely special graphics card, there's nothing particularly that wows me about it, and as I mentioned, it is lacking quite a number of features which we have come to expect from other graphics cards. However, we are expecting it to be priced competitively here in the UK, we're expecting pricing to be around £290, and at the end of the day, an RX 580 is an RX 580, so if you want that kind of performance which is perfect for 1080p or even some 1440p gaming, the ASRock Phantom Gaming X RX 580 is worth buying. If you do have a bit more cash to splash however, you can, as I mentioned, find slightly quieter cards as well as those with more features. But on the whole, it is a solid first effort from ASRock and it will definitely appeal to those who want a simpler and hopefully cheaper RX 580. I'm Dominic for Kikguru, this has been our review of the ASRock Phantom Gaming X RX 580. If you like this video you can hit the like button below, leave a comment and subscribe. Make sure you hit the bell icon as well to be notified about all of our future videos and we'd also love to chat with you over on Facebook and Twitter. But until then, I will see you in the next video.